uh, I've got to tell my earthquake story. It's a little bit longer than the length of an Instagram video, okay? Um, because there have been two earthquakes here on July the 4th and 5th in Southern California, of course, out in the Mojave Desert area, Ridgecrest area, so quite a ways away from LA, in between LA and Las Vegas. I mean, we still felt it here, but felt both of them here, but nothing like being in LA in January. January 17th, 1994, I was five miles away from the epicenter of what was called the Northridge, Northridge earthquake. And technically, the epicenter, epicenter was in Reseda. I was in Van Nuys. Uh, but it was called the Northridge earthquake, I think, because people died there. Uh, the wall collapsed on a student at, at CSUN and um, an apartment complex. Um, the second floor crashed down on the first and I worked with someone who was in that apartment complex at the time on the second floor and suddenly found themselves on the first floor yeah it's pretty crazy I mean I I was in a house that had been earthquake bolted fortunately uh, and I had been out that night because it was a holiday I went I was actually at the Troubadour Club in West Hollywood I, with a friend and we saw a Queen tribute band you know not not a cover band a tribute band so there weren't that many tribute bands yet at that time uh, they, they were pretty good I came home we were talking uh, when I dropped my friend off um, in North Hollywood we saw the what do you call the electrical um, on the the poles like transformers I guess they were Suddenly, this was probably 1.15 in the morning and um, in North Hollywood. And the Transformers that were right there on the street were like, there were sparks coming out of them. And we thought, well, that's kind of weird, you know. Didn't think anything of it. So I went home and I was in bed probably by 2 a.m., something like that. And then I awakened at 3.30 in the morning by these violent, well actually the first thing I heard was an explosion and, and the first thing that came to my mind in that moment was, oh my gosh, it's an atomic bomb, right? And, uh, and then just this violent shaking, it seemed like it lasted forever, but I think it was only, I think it was under a minute, but man, it seemed like it was for, for a long time, a lot, lot longer than that. And I, th I think I was in a state of shock because I didn't move from my bed. Um, I heard the cats in the house scrambling out the door, just scrambling, and they were obviously scrambling over things that had fallen everywhere. But it was dark, the lights were out. I saw transformers sparking outside on the street, and car alarms were going off. Really bizarre situation. And it was just pitch dark, and I heard even cassette tapes flying past my head and things falling off of shelves in my room. Um, and it was a good thing I didn't have to get out of bed. I might have been clobbered by something falling. And when the shaking seemed like it was finally over, I realized I didn't have any clothes on. <laughs> and one of my housemates w had already gotten out. And he, he, I heard him say, Dan, get the heck out of there. And uh, I, so I, I knew I, I didn't have any clothes on. So I grabbed a pair of pants that I found that with my hands in the dark. And I... I think I maybe found a shirt real quick and I, maybe my thongs or something, I can't even remember. And I, I, I know I went outside the front yard and met neighbors for the first time. And uh, we were all kind of like, wow, what? It's like, you know, wow. Uh, but literally, um, and the third housemate, the owner of the house, came out. He looked like he just woke up. He said he slept through half the earthquake. I don't even know that's how that's even possible. It was shaking like violently. And I think the first reports were 7 point something, maybe even 8. And then they kind of uh, downgraded it to 6.9, I think, or something like that. And I honestly think they might have done that just to, to not to freak people out so much. Not that it already did freak, freak, freak us out or were close to the epicenter. And we found out we were five miles away. And it seemed like, I think what was happening is that it was a shaking kind of um, quake because there were two fault lines that had crashed into each other would have explained um, 
the explosion at first. But it was very just surreal and very scary. Um, and uh, especially in the uh, aftermath, you know, uh, one of my roommates and I, we, we went out to, there was actually Starbucks then in 1994, believe it or not, Starbucks has been around that long. And uh, um, to get a cup of coffee of all crazy things, to, the first thing you think of is going to get a cup of coffee and looking around at damage. And you could tell the buildings that were built during the Reagan era when there was more um, deregulation even in construction, the, the, the buildings built at that time, it was, they, they just, they felt many of them couldn't withstand um, the shaking and they collapsed on each other. I mean, there's one condo complex I saw um, that just had two units that, comp that uh, collapsed on each other. And so over the, kind of like the, the, the middle area where there may have been at least lounge chairs or a pool or something and they just kind of collapsed into each other uh, over that area, whatever you call that common area. Um, but the buildings that were older, particularly like the house I lived in that was earthquake bolted, suffered minor damage even after going through the massive shaking. I mean, there was a crack on the wall, something like that. The main thing was that just stuff had fallen off the walls. I mean, the refrigerator doors open, kitchen cabinets open, and there's all this stuff on the floor food and and uh, like say in my room things were tossed all about and the cabinet in the bathroom was knocked off the floor onto the floor I should say I mean it was just crazy and um, I met neighbors for the first time um, didn't even realize why well, it's a small world that one of, one of my neighbors were the parents of a famous studios uh, executive at that time um, what a small world um, yeah and fortunately you know we were shaken but um, and there were aftershocks in the in the five range uh, on the Richter scale for for a week and it was inconsistent could never predict when they would happen and I knew friends that lived in other parts of the city didn't experience what we experienced there in the San Fernando Valley. And uh, so I know that being close to the epicenter is a big deal. And I was even interviewed by uh, one of the writers for the LA Times at that time about my experience. So, um, yeah, that was my experience. It was called the Northridge, Northridge Quake, but it, the epicenter was actually in Reseda. And I was in Van Nuys, five miles away. Martin Luther King Day, January 17th. 1994. So that's my memory. So anything that we experienced here July 4th and 5th, uh, 2019, here in the Los Angeles area was very, very minor in comparison to that. So I'm psychologically prepared for what that experience is, but it did kind of remind me of that, bring back some memories. It's good to pay attention, good to have um, some water, canned goods, different things that you might need. You never know. Uh, and make sure you know the best place to go when you have to respond immediately. Uh, stay away from glass, cover your head, cover your face. Yeah. Stay away from heavy things or things that you know that could collapse. Um, yeah, all those common sense things anyway. That's my earthquake story. just thought I'd share it because it was obviously a bit longer than an Instagram video. Have a great uh, day. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my weekend, with my Saturday night anyway, with a uh, smoothie. Cheers.